right, we have two stories going on when it comes to unconditional love. The first story is the one that we get as children that's imprinted in our bodies as a resonance. It's like a vibration that we feel. So it's unconscious. We end up attracting relationships and situations into our life that are of the same resonance that we felt when we were children. And what happens is we associate this resonance with unconditional love. So this concept of unconditional love, the, the first thing to become aware of is this unconscious resonance and why we so often repeat the same pattern throughout our life. And then the second piece is that we have a conscious story of love, which is get married, have kids, live happily ever after, which is actually a fairy tale. So we have these two different narratives going on around unconditional love, and actually neither of them are unconditional. <laughs> so it's really great to start to unpack this and to see the illusion between both storylines. So the real work now starts in, okay, well, what even is unconditional love then? If that's not unconditional love and that's not unconditional love, what even is it? So what I wanted to share with you today is five of my favorite tips that we can work with on our journey into truly loving ourselves unconditionally. The first step is giving ourselves grace. What this means is being a little bit easier on ourselves and not being so harsh on ourselves all the time and cutting ourselves a little bit of slack. So really giving ourselves the gift of grace is a huge, huge, huge step in the direction of self-love. The next step is to make a list of 10 things that we are proud of. 10 things in our life that we really did great. 10 things in our lives that we can say, wow, that really was something that I feel good about. And just to remember and reflect, oh yeah, I have done some good things because so often it's really easy to forget and to only focus on the negative or focus on our mistakes. The third step is to remind ourselves that we're doing enough. It can be really easy when we get on this self-discovery journey to feel like we have to do all the things all the time. And that's just not true. And what that does is it spins us out and actually creates the opposite effect. So we think we're not doing enough. We should be meditating for two hours a day and we're only meditating for 15 minutes. You know, we start to set these really high expectations for ourselves on our self-discovery path that we're not doing enough. And really what, what I like to recommend is that you find your own routine that is manageable. So starting off with five minutes of meditation a day or 10 minutes of meditation a day, and then slowly working up. What I recommend in my program with my clients is the hour of power. And what we do is we take an hour aside in the morning, an hour aside in the evening, and we break that hour down. So we do 15 minutes of breath work, we do 15 minutes of journaling, and then we do a half an hour of yoga in that hour. Change really does require some work. You can just start small and manageable. You're doing enough. The next step is to look at how far you've come. So it can be really easy to always be looking forward and always be focused on your future goals. Instead of taking inventory right here and right now of, oh yeah, oh my gosh, you know, remember where I was 10 years ago? Look how far I am now. And really giving yourself that reality check and honoring 
how far you've come. The last step, our mistakes are our biggest teachers. And so in this step, it's really about self-forgiveness and failing forward. Because for me, I know that I used to really beat myself up whenever I made a mistake or whenever I felt like I failed. And I would set the bar super high and if I didn't reach that outcome, I would feel like I failed. And then that would start the sabotage spiral going down. And my new approach, which is super awesome, is that it's about failing forward to actually realize to get anywhere to make any kind of change requires making mistakes and it requires failing it requires not knowing what the heck we're doing and doing it anyway and learning from our mistakes our mistakes and our failures are really our biggest teachers and they are what have brought us exactly to where we are now and without failing and without making mistakes, we can never make progress. We can never learn anything new. And it requires a lot of falling on our heads or having big wipeouts to realize, oh my gosh, that was a fail. But guess what? I really learned something from that. So it's to take the gold out of our mistakes, to take the real learning out of our fails and integrate that into how we can move forward having learned and grown. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you want support on your self-love in sobriety journey, then I would love to hop on a free consultation call with you to find out where you are now, where you wanna go, and if I can help you to bridge that gap. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Namaste.